So thank you all for joining us this evening for the ACT final lecture series event this semester. I'm Gediminos Urbonis, director of the MIT program in art, culture, and technology. Inspired by our predecessor, the Center for Advanced Visual Studies tonight, we continue a 10-year tradition of inviting important cultural thinkers and cultural producers to explore emerging lines of artistic practice, research, and pedagogy. The concept for this lecture series toward a philosophy of the act was inspired by an early work of Mikhail Bakhtin, which meditated on the difference between physical and mental acts on lived experience versus uh, the representation of experience. Our focus with this series is to explore methods of embodied experience. Our assemble of speakers and respondents are engaged a range of themes. Among them, the design of social systems and participatory engagement, spatial practices of the commons, rhizomatic platforms of exchange, and teaching as artistic problem. In the spirit of the roundtable format, which, by the way, was inspired uh, by our meeting with Pelentan this summer at Venice Biennial. Uh, we would like the lecture to give the way uh, to a discussion involving the whole group, a discussion sparked by our respondents, Ethan Zuckerman and Lillian Hsu, who will be introduced in a few moments. I, and just before I introduce tonight's guest, I'd like to recognize the serious coordinator, Amanda Moore, ACT alumna, uh, and the input of ACT students in bringing the series to life. And of course, uh, our sponsor, Council for Arts at MIT. Okay, it's my pleasure this evening to welcome back former ACT research fellow, Pelin Tan, Istanbul-based sociologist, art historian, researcher, and writer, whose work on artist-run spaces and urban justice spans Europe and Asia. Aside from being an associate professor in architecture at Mardin Artuklu University, Tan in, is many things, including, just to name a few, a member of video collective uh, Artiki Seller, co-founder of Video Occupy and the BAKMA me, uh, Digital Media Archive of Political Movements in Turkey, co-director of science fiction film series on the future of art called 2084 with artist Anton Vidokle, principal researcher of on the spatial social analysis of refugee camps in southern Turkey. Joining perspectives in urban pedagogy, critical spatial practice, and contemporary art, Tan is interested in the creation of common spaces from translocal knowledge, production, and aliens. Tonight, she will speak about possibilities and limits of transversal methods in art and spatial realities. What is perhaps common to new cultural and activist practices is a focus on experimentation rather than representation, a focus on means, on activity that brings into proximity the why and the how of coming together. Few of the theories, like Gerald Ronning and Susan Kelly, uh, consider that such practices uh, may use artistic modalities as opposed to representation or even expressions creatively producing new organizational forms, constellations, and situations as they move through physical and social spaces. Alongside Pelin, Ethan, and Lillian, we are joined this evening by two moderators, ACT graduate students, Angel Chen and Ursula August. Ursula August is a South African artist and writer with background in film and journalism. Her research-driven practice takes the form of installations, film, and sculptures. She is currently working on a film that considers migration, memory, and the archive in the context of the 50s apartheid South Africa. As a teacher of high school students, Ursula is also interested in the potentialities of education as cultural production and as commons. Angel Chen is an artist from Taipei, Taiwan. Her work investigates forms of social relations in the context of digital culture and urbanization. Her current research combines microbiology and social media-based big data research. She holds BA in philosophy and computer science from McGill University. I'll now turn the floor over to Ursula and Agil 
to introduce our respondents. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us this evening uh, for our last lecture. Um, I have prepared, or rather we have prepared just a text to give a bit of an overview, a flavor for this evening's lecture. Methodology is not only the means of a system for describing realities, it is a political tool that takes part in the process of knowledge production. From the perspective of, of an integrated relational practice in the fields of urban studies, pedagogy, and contemporary art, Palin Tan conveys how collective experience of the translocal production of knowledge and of instant alliances leads to the creation of common spaces. Both on theoretical and practical levels, such processes could well be vital in enabling the knowledge of everyday life to intervene in institutional bodies. Methodology could also be vital in the flow of alternative pedagogies into different platforms, resulting in the emergence of creative forms of solidarity in extraterritorial spaces. Um, we have two respondents joining us this evening. Ethan Zuckerman is director for the Center for Civic Media and a principal research scientist at the MIT Media Lab. His research focuses on the distribution of attention in mainstream and new media, the use of technology for international development, and the use of new media technologies by activists. In 2000, Zuckerman founded Geek, Geek Corps, a technology volunteer corps that sends IT specialists to work on projects in developing nations with a focus on West Africa. Previously, he helped found Tripod.com, one of the web's first personal publishing sites. Um, Lilian Shi has been director of public art and exhibitions since 2006 at Cambridge Arts, the arts agency for the city of Cambridge, where she manages long-term and temporary public art projects for the city, including the Percent for Art program and Gallery 344. For three years prior to that, Lillian administered education and outreach for the Cambridge Public Art Program. Lillian is also an educator and an artist, and her work has been shown throughout New England. Her work includes sculpture, drawing, collaborative projects, and written word. Now please join me in welcoming to Palin Tan. Sorry, one second. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, for coming. Um, I maybe it's a bit uh, confusing um, what um, I'm doing. Sometimes is a big dilemma and confusing for me too. Um, the first. Um, Mm, part uh, for me is um, both my education uh, and my practice um, differs in, uh, in different institutions and time. And uh, this gives uh, kind of vital, always questioning what this methodology is. I came from sociology and art history education and uh, and worked long years in architecture faculty uh, as an art historian and sociology. And um, there was always a problem for me, uh, one, how we are working together inside the academia, and also um, how can we act together uh, in the social sphere. Um, I, it's very uh, dubious also. You're coming from a very um, academic life. You do this PhD, you do this master, and then you get tenured, and you, you follow this whole path, institutional, very um, um, strict. Um, and always you have a problem um, with um, how, what kind of knowledge you are producing and presenting, and uh, how it is working. Um, I was... Um, after MIT, I went back to Istanbul for two years. I worked in Istanbul. 
And then I was very uh, uh, questioning um, how, uh, what, what I'm doing, does it make sense? And uh, how I can really, uh, with my colleague, people collectively, we can produce new uh, ways of doing, new, new ways of doing, producing knowledge, which brings me the question of met methods, methodology. And uh, a, a group of my friends, architect, uh, they founded a new architecture faculty in southeast of Turkey, which is the Kurdish, basically the Kurdish region right now. And uh, they invited me um, if I'm interested to go and work with them. So I moved there um, nearly um, uh, two and a half, three years ago. And um, there was another uh, phase for me. Uh, we are in the officially war zone, and uh, it's a governmental institution faculty. It's a Turkish government uh, public university. Um, we are teaching, but our students are Arabs and Kurds, and uh, we don't know their languages, but they know Turkish, and uh, and we are basically in in real. We are in war, and. Uh, uh, a civil and also the Syrian war effect. So, um, so the the one side was at the faculty to proceed a different kind of um, autonomous education of architecture. This was our dream um, that we're trying to do. Uh, but secondly, it was also uh, for our personal experience to be in this geography territory and try to do something. Um, so I try to work more. I mean, besides this artistic practice, uh, I'm involved um, also institutionally, a, a hardcore. I mean, you are in the institution, and uh, you're running a faculty, and um, you have to deal with a lot of things. And uh, so it was a kind of like two identity that what I'm doing uh, with artists and outside with my video collective and so on. And then also I'm in the I'm the dean of the faculty, and I have to keep the faculty. Um, so um, this two experience, um, I think, which, which I'm living now, um, uh, brings me this kind of um, question. So you will see the title is uh, Transversal Methodology, how we can think different kind of discipline, uh, methodology of different kind of disciplines, that maybe for artists is not so much um, uh, foreign, uh, as they mostly proceed um, kind of multiple uh, research and methods in their research. And uh, um, I'm also very much personally, in, 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 in my academic work, I'm interested, um, uh, methodology is a very scientific work. It's very institutional uh, concept. And uh, uh, I teach um, research methods to graduate students, to architects. And um, and uh, it's also how can, how can you really teach differently? I mean, this is a kind of uh, how we work. It's about how we work, um, but uh, how we do research, how we really create knowledge, but uh, how it's possible to turn it in a non-institutional way, how its representation um, could be um, less active and can go direct um, action. This kind of question I'm thinking, um, and um, I'm just working on that. I don't have any concrete solution, but I, will, I want to show something what I'm doing. And uh, the la labor and fear and love, I think is all involved in that. And um, um, four thing is very important. Um, it's, it, it can sound, we can discuss at very macro level, but uh, method, surplus, institution, and autonomy, both in my work and most of your work too, is very important, I guess. And, um, but it's also something that I experience in Southeast Turkey right now also. Um, so you, you experience the so society, the social change in front of your eyes. You are partially um, part of this change or you're observing it. Um, These four methods, surplus, institution and autonomy, comes always together as a um, question. 
Um, so I, I was, uh, these are nice sentences. And Mary, maybe again, uh, it says very macro, um, it is it's response to a very macro paradigms. But I'm sure in a, you can find very relative experience from your own experience, from your own um, practice too. Um, and uh, uh, I'm very, I mean, there was a question that maybe we can discuss later about, it's very, um, I mean, you can see in every event now we are discussing about commons, and uh, it, it became more important after the Occupy movement, especially my experience was more um, with Gezi Park, um, occupying Gezi Park, and uh, there was a lot of dilemma, I mean, how to act collectively, how to bring our own practice together, how to create um, a new general intellect out of that, and... Um, and how we can sustain that. And um, it fails uh, always. And um, so it's a, also a question of failure and then um, how to uh, find way of um, uh, collectiveness. I think this is a very topic, um, it's very global right now that we're all uh, talking. I'm very depending on uh, um, Gibson Graham's um, um, uh, questions and ideas, and uh, and uh, how this whole um, uh, or uh, practice can lead to a political collective action. Um, I will give some example of my practice, but maybe you can we can think we can we can, I can frame it with those uh, concept um, how we collaborate how we disseminate our general intellect and uh, our collective knowledge, how we turn it into our action labor, and um, what kind of alternative economies and gift economies we are creating, um, how to sustain that, is it possible? And uh, it fails generally, why it fails, and, uh, um, and uh, what, is the, what, I mean, what is the meaning of such uh, words when it comes to a very specific territorial context. Um, it can be also in a very urban uh, context. Um, the transversal in my title comes from Felix Gattari. I think most of us maybe well, we, we, we are very um, um, familiar with his term. He doesn't give so uh, too much details um, in his work, but he, um, he was also actively um, an activist and also um, as a scientific researcher and writer. And um, so he says uh, transversal, transversality is neither institutional therapy, nor institutional pedagogy, nor of the struggle of social emancipation, but which invoke an analytical method that could transverse these multiple fields. Um, it's a bit difficult. It sounds very difficult, but uh, we we try. Um, there was a lot of experience that um, we, maybe me and all of us, we participated in Occupy movement. It's always uh, remained for us, I mean, the relation, the coexistence of uh, communities after Occupy uh, is a new era, uh, new relation and uh, new knowledge. But at the same time, it was very, um, mm, it had a very, um, especially after the occupies, for Gezi, for example, it had a very um, sub sublime uh, meaning uh, that was almost not, not possible to criticize uh, uh, or experience. Um, we, um, with my video collective, uh, when we were occupying in the park, we created um, some kind of meetings discussing directly about um, action, the difference between action labor and voluntary labor, how um, you use your, how you volunteer your, your labor in the um, Occupy or this kind of um, uh, gatherings, uh, coexistence of communities, what kind of, how you, how you bring your practice, how you bring your knowledge. And, uh, and uh, we, we were just hating this voluntary labor. Um, um, and uh, we, we wanted to go beyond that. Um, 
and uh, uh, we just did run some uh, meetings during the park process. And um, I, w I always was seeing that not a simple activism, but um, um, something um, part of um, methods um, of how we are um, experiencing each other and uh, how we are bringing all, all uh, collective knowledge together and acting it. So um, I, was, I went more on um, very typical for my background social science, which I forgot actually, uh, and uh, art history that we had very strong methodology courses, I remember always. But then after, um, I was so against sociology and art history, both discipline, and uh, um, I kept far um, from this whole methodological question, but then I went back to core and to, so to some thinkers from the 70s, also from the 90s, to really understand again um, how uh, methods can be assembled, can be bring together in different um, occasion, in different practice on the way, and uh, how can be processed. Um, um, institution um, is one of the other question. Um, I will show you later. I'm I'm running uh, with an artist, Ahmed Oud, uh, Silent University. Silent University is a fictional university. is a platform for refugees and um, and uh, by refugees, and uh, we 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 working since six years on this platform, and is always institutionalism is a kind of um, barrier for us. Um, this experience. I will tell more, and uh, uh, also, um, beside that, I, I mentioned before, I work in a very hardcore governmental university, which is an institution, very hardcore institution. So there's always a dilemma that one fictional university, one is a very real university, and then sometimes you mix which, is, which one is really fictional and which one is really real. Um, um, with silent um, university, I think um, uh, one thing was in the beginning, to really use the um, artistic practice as a uh, modality. I will show from the website. Um, um, this is Silent University uh, website. And um, Silent University f um, functions like um, there are many branches. Who wants to set Silent University? Uh, can request, and Silent University is based on teaching, but more sharing knowledge between um, people, either refugees or asylum seekers or researchers who are um, um, working on this field. Um, it's, it's initiated by artist Ahmed Oud, and uh, we were working for a long time together. Uh, in the past, we were producing magazine and so on. And together, we both we wrote uh, a kind of uh, um, principles and demands of the silent university. Um, we are not so successful. We are failing to run this um, silent university. We were just talking two days ago, should we stop? You know, it's, getting, it's getting a kind of a very um, um, nice, sexy project for social engaged art um, um, institution practitioners or practitioners or um, uh, or the refugee um, issue. It's very vital and this project gets very attention. And does it really work? And uh, we know that it doesn't work so well. Um, we have some branches in Hamburg uh, and in South Germany, in London, in Tensta Kunsthalle is hosting one. And generally, the Silent University works like that. Um, any institution or um, community or sometimes refugee um, NGOs asking us, they want to run. And, uh, and uh, we ask them to give three years um, 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 time to really devote themselves, uh, minimum, 
and uh, generally they bring their own um, institutional um, infrastructure and they hosting and uh, um, any people uh, can involve anyone who's interested and uh, the teaching is based on the proposal of refugees and asylum seekers or migrant who wants to uh, teach something or, or, or give a workshop or collective so if you go up here uh, you can see our courses um, you can enroll this uh, uh, website uh, we have lecturers and uh, fellows we try to make it look like really a university we have identity cards and uh, um, we have uh, lecturer consult fellows and uh, contributors and we're doing a lot of research um, references on alternative pedagogy too, and uh, uh, the courses. Let me show. Oh, um, anyone propose any topic, what they want to teach, and uh, and uh, um, some institution are hosting. Um, it's uh, there are workshops they're setting up. But then after a while, the sustainability of those kind of projects like silent university branches doesn't really work very well. Um, one, uh, one reason uh, is um, the institutions, no, the, the, the problem of uh, the authority, authority of institution who are hosting it. Uh, there's always a clash because silent university is another institution, although it's fiction, no the whole uh, framing, the identity. Um, but it, it gets clash with the institutional, with the institution, uh, no policy. Um, this is one uh, problem. And uh, secondly, um, in different cities, uh, there are different problems we recognized. What, uh, this, this was happened like that. Um, we were invited to do it in Jordan, uh, in Amman. And uh, recently in Athens, in Greece, I'm setting up Silent University Athens now with some Greek uh, activists. And um, we, 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 we find out with Ahmed, um, it's very different than European cities, West European cities, West European institutions um, who are hosting Silent University. There are many other um, issues. I mean, there are, when you compare, there are negative side and positive side um, in terms of fun finding funding, finding a space that you don't need to pay a rent to host silent university lectures, uh, um, a kind of other um, representational problems um, with the refugee hood. And uh, so, um, now we are trying Amman and Athens. Maybe we can discuss this later. Um, it's very difficult. And, uh, and Ahmed was telling me the other day, maybe we should stop uh, this and, um, uh, and not pretend um, that this, this, this project goes successfully. But I think uh, some, some part, the failures, um, is part of this kind of pro uh, project and needs some long years commitment and process, I guess. Um, I just uh, go back uh, quickly to um, another institutional. Um, I, I worked a lot. Um, I'm working um, in um, West Bank in Palestine. Yeah. Maybe you know the um, platform Campus and Camp, I'm sure you heard of that, um, is run in Daishek Camp in West Bank, is a, is a Palestinian refugee camp, urbanized uh, camp, which is nearly inside uh, Bethlehem. And uh, uh, this is the Palestinian youth from Daishek Camp and some, also some other camps like Al Fawar and uh, um, Aida Camp too. There are different kind of uh, young people they're involved and architects, uh, Alessandro Petty and Sandy Hilal, is, they are the co-initiator. And uh, we work um, a lot together uh, to really discuss about what can, can be the alternative methods of um, pedagogy. 
And uh, there is another question of, um, this is what I have also in my own uh, region faculty where I'm working right now, um, how is possible, how we can think of pedagogy in, in, in the zone of state of exception, um, how we can proceed um, education. And um, although it sounds very difficult, and maybe it's very also negative, um, um, and uh, very frustrating because, for example, now uh, around where I live, uh, some Kurdish cities, they are under siege um, by Turkish military. And my students are hardly able to come to, to the faculty or, or they cannot go out from their city sometimes. Or um, when they allow them to go out, they, they run out 9 a.m. and they participate in my course and then they go back. And uh, this is a kind of this is a kind of very extreme condition of um, education, and same in Palestinian camps. Um, this is also um, a case. And we were discussing, we were producing um, since three years um, or this, um, ideas and um, how we can look into kind of a potential side of that, um, not to see this the zone or the uh, the pressure of state of exception as a is a, is a um, condition that uh, prevent us uh, from creating um, new methods, but in reverse, as potentials that we can find a different kind of maneuver and uh, transfer methodologies in pedagogy and uh, work with the student together and maybe people, it doesn't need to be student, but um, people who wants to involve. We are working on that right now Campus and camp um, wants to extend, and uh, I will, uh, uh, with my colleague, I will um, start satile campus and camp in Mardin, uh, which is which will be partially um, a think tank educational platform, and um, we will, which will be more focused on architectural practice, and uh, uh, and we will try to find. The collaborations, um, although there are uh, borders, and uh, I mean it's always difficult to go to West, West Bank and go out from Israel. I mean with my students, it, it's really um, uh, un difficult. Uh, but we try to manage um, um, in this way to proceed in this way. Um, um, another um, example. Um, Last uh, September, uh, we went uh, when we went to um, to uh, campus and camp um, with my graduate student, um, um, and David Harvey also joined me, and uh, we went there for three days workshop in two different camp, and uh, that time Alessandro and Sandy and uh, the other. Uh, um, Isaac and Ayat, who were who were involved, they um, built an architectural structure of uh, resembling or um, um, looking like a tent, uh, but from cement. So um, this was important. This was our first meeting in the tent um, when we arrived there, um, and. We had the aim to spend three days together discussing about in different camps with different people how we can proceed or collaboration on different kind of educational uh, structure. And the concrete tent was hosting us. It's, it is in Daishek camp, by the way. And it's, we can discuss more. It's very important. Tent is a symbol of Palestinian uh, movement. Um, and uh, metaphorically, it resembles their Nakba after the post Nakba day, and cement is a kind of material which is very permanent. So tent is temporary, but uh, um, uh, the material is um, um, permanent. So this kind of um, discussion and this this whole um, experience, like coming from Mardin, where we are surrounded with four official refugee camp right now, and we are 40 minutes far from Syrian border, um, we we were trying to make some kind of um, parallel um, ideas uh, between um, the situation in Daesh camp uh, and also or um, and. 
that day we were discussing about autonomy. Everything that we were um, experiencing and the difficulties, I mean, before what I explained with silent university and, um, and uh, also um, my own experience uh, in my faculty to really remain in this zone to create a different kind of education, which is an official uh, university, and also the campus can come experience. That day, we were really concentrated on autonomy. And um, 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 one thing was, um, I was experiencing some cities in Southeast announce their self-autonomy, the Kurdish town. Um, so they started to last summer to announce the uh, few cities their self autonomy and uh, uh, mayors, uh, Kurdish mayors, uh, they they did that. Of course, immediately they were arrested by Turkish government. But this was an ex ex interesting moment that we were living. That um, you immediately um, um, announce uh, your community, your city, uh, self. We are self autonomous. We are not following Turkish government anymore. We will, we will um, govern ourselves. This was a kind of um, experience that even the Kurdish um, um, public themselves, they got confused. And then there was another experience that I was very um, involved uh, and uh, witnessed. Uh, the Kobani, um, I think all of you, 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 you follow the Kobani battle. And after the Kobani, there was an initiation now. Uh, there's an initiation called Rebuilding uh, Kobani. It is led basically by um, architectural chambers and urban planning chambers. And it's a kind of basically architects and urban planners are involved, um, mostly, most of them, uh, with rebuilding the city. And uh, it was also the question of um, autonomy, again. Uh, autonomy as Kobani. Um, as, as an administrative body, part which is um, depending on Ro um, Rojava and Jizire cantons. But at the same time, um, the city, rebuilding the city after destruction. And, um, and what are the rules? What are the uh, design strategies? What are the common um, 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 assemblies who are proceeding? this kind of process. With, um, with David, we went down to Kobane, to Suruç border, and we, we, were, we met some architects from there, and it was a really question of, uh, again, uh, end up uh, questioning and trying to define what is autonomy is. I mean, here I'm speaking in an administrative level and um, as an um, infrastructure level, that is, I think, same my same experience, similar experience in silent university, in campus and camp. What we are doing in my own faculty and this whole geography. So, I can I think we can really discuss on few um, few um, meaning and practice of um, autonomy, and uh, um, this is also kind of my fourth. Um, that what I'm dealing nowadays um, very confused. Um, you, you have real uh, life experience, you see, you observe, you're part of that, and then you have this um, kind of theoret theoretical background. Many things is written about autonomy. Um, I, I, I went more to Cornelius Castorodi's um, definition of autonomy that is basically autonom autonomy needs radical imagination, radical social um, change. It is not given. It is a kind of um, dynamic um, conflict between institutes and instituting society. I think this, I felt I was living really with my oldest institutional experience and um, um, this notion. We, um, art, with artist um, Anton Widokne, uh, we started a, a very serious research in 2004, 2005 on artist-run spaces and artist in initiative and collectives. And um, we organized some workshops in Istanbul. We did a lot of other meetings in Berlin. We were in different cities, Beirut, Istanbul, and there and this. 
and uh, um, through our, all years, last 10 years, um, we experienced different conditions of different cultural policy, different kind of institutional practice. And uh, um, we, in, we were invited to uh, Vancouver, uh, um, a meeting in Vancouver on Artists Collective. It was a, a three, four days big Congress. And um, uh, we were advising kind of this Congress for, for one and a half year, two years. And then they invited us also to, to propose a project to do something. And uh, we came up, I mean, it, it was not our practice really, but we came up with uh, one film. Um, we were imagining we are, what will happen in the future, where there is no institution anymore, and how um, autonomy can be structured, what will be the practice of that. Um, we did three films. I mean, we were not planning that, uh, but we did one film. Uh, and. Uh, 20 minutes and then we did the second film and uh, the second film was uh, which is a ter um, which is an episode that follows in the future that plants and animals are communicating in tele telepathy and telepathy is art uh, there's no institution no museum no galleries and um, art is only about um, uh, when we were shooting the film the Gezi Park, uh, we, I was in Gezi in the park and Anton came down and uh, after that we went to Cappadocia, mid Anatolia and uh, in the cave with one donkey and plant we, we shot this uh, film. I, I will show you a little bit more about this. Um, and we thought um, this is getting very um, difficult topic. Um, First, in the first film, we did an open call through EFLAX. We invited everybody to join who was interested uh, in the film as an audition. Um, and uh, we went to a studio, we sit there, and two days we were waiting, we were waiting for artists to come. And uh, people who, were, who saw this call, uh, they came, they were knocking the door and coming. And, uh, they were saying what they want to, how they imagine in the future uh, art. After this film, which was, I think, not so good film, we were not good in um, editing, we were so confused. And also, um, we thought we, have, we are in art field, we will come up with creative um, um, topic ideas, but it ended up that uh, we didn't have any original ideas so much. We were not really good to imagine in the future a kind of autonomous infrastructure that artists um, uh, working and what is the form of art. So we went to a second film to invent. I, I saw it more those films as a, for me, not so much an artistic um, production but more as a um, research. Um, and um, um, the third film was after the Gezi Park. We were discussing a lot with Anton. And uh, what is the failures? What is the unsuccessful side? And uh, how we can really um, um, think, uh, imagine um, autonomous structures the institutional part, the, the funding money part, and also some values, what has been uh, describing the whole artistic work. Um, we, with the third film, which is the second episode, actually, it is about um, Occupy movements basically get successful and artists are governing the government. I mean, artists are setting the republic and they are um, they're ruling, and then they got corrupt, and they fail. So it was, we call it the fail of artist republic, the, fa the fall of artist republic. Um, we are not cynical, or I'm not a negative, uh, so pessimist, but um, we were try to really um, um, fictionalize, um, also from the possibilities, what is the, in the reality, but also um, 
trying to um, focus on um, what could be, what could, what could look like uh, an artist republic. Let me a little bit um, show something. Um, Feelings of thinking substance change weather conditions. When the artist republic collapsed, its sudden ruin seemed almost inexplicable. The consequence of the collapse was seen clear enough, but its causes have never satisfactorily been explained. Soon after, public opinion reached the conclusion that art had become a thing of the past, and that, for the time being, the less said or thought about it, the better for one's peace of mind. But although art as we thought we knew it, is a thing of the past. The artist has not become extinct. One morning, a young artist posted online, if you really want to do something, don't just like this post. Let's meet at 10.30 in the square. What started as a minor attempt to speak out for the tiny creative class rapidly developed into a gigantic people's uprising. It triggered reshaping of the world's map. The artist's task of building up a real republic, a new type of democracy, had to be undertaken. This is a reconstruction of the People's Library from the period of insurrections. It is very quaint, with real printed matter and shelves. This is a video room, typical of the insurrection period. Internet and social platforms were used to disseminate footage to bypass mainstream media. This is a field food center. This is a hospital. This is a tent. This is a gas mask. This is a helmet. This is a computer. I'm sorry, I have to stop here, but I can give the link. Uh, who's interested, we have online. Um, this was, um, we shot it in Lebanon in Tripoli, north of uh, Tripoli. And uh, the whole structure you see is the um, fairground of Oscar Niemeyer, um, which was designed and uh, built but never completed because of the Civil War. And it remained as a ruin, a modernistic ruin in kind of uh, south of Tripoli. Um, for us, it uh, was um, important to shoot there. I mean, not only uh, the space is very um, was fitting to our uh, work, 
and uh, it was impressive, but it's, it was also, um, there was a um, public bombings that time in Tripoli. I mean, um, in, this, in, the, in the old square, uh, con I mean, often Tripoli has uh, a lot of um, bombs in the squares in their uh, city center. And, uh, and uh, the structure as a ruin um, was also kind of metaphorically important, which was hosted uh, a lot of things in the, during the Civil War, um, weapons or people hided themselves and so on. So it was totally functioned in a different way. And this memory and this whole, the space of the memory was very important for us. The other thing was that um, my experience in Gezi Park, um, that uh, there were many different people in the park from different ideologies. And, um, and uh, we were, um, um, with my video collective, we were, in, in the, from the beginning, with, we were occupying the space, but also um, we were shooting a lot of videos. Um, and uh, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, but we, we, we try to find out, to witness, we are inside, but record. Um, of course, there is another side of mainstream media, how they are um, showing the whole event, but it's also about um, uh, how they are displaying. Um, but it's also uh, like, so it, it, it getting, um, uh, finding more alternative um, dissemination of media. And uh, this, um, um, of course, is different kind of video experience. I mean, this other film is like uh, very like scripted montage and this and that. But um, it was important. Uh, I, I, uh, this our experience with different kind of groups and people and communities. There was a lot of conflict and antagonism in, in inside the movement which is somehow very diff similar that uh, where I live now in the southeast region where the Kurdish movement is very heterogeneous and very has a lot of conflict on uh, uh, proceeding the mo their movement. And um, we, um, we wanted to make connection um, with um, many other uh, movements. We started with Gezi and we started uh, to set a platform, open source video platform archive, and we work. We try to work a lot on autonomous archiving archives, and uh, this is Batma. Um, we contacted to Patma in India, is a video collective run by Camp. Um, Camp is a collective, um, uh, activist collective, in India, and. Uh, we found that two German hackers are writing this program and we contacted them. They came to Istanbul, they, they set up one week workshop, they did teach us uh, how to do this and they set up the program BAKMA. You can register, you can do your own assemblage of videos, you can download, you can upload. We uploaded first or um, uh, recordings of Gezi, like it is uh, over 2,000 hours, and uh, also other people who gave us their archive. We continued uh, to make it, we wanted to make a connection, we wanted to make connection with other movements, um, because we thought that we are really putting a Gezi Park experience uh, in a very sublime uh, uh, con, uh, meaning and uh, exaggerating and, we, and not really see the problems what we lived and after the collapse of the uh, communities. And uh, we, um, we added a uh, different kind of archive. For example, one archive we recently showed in Istanbul Biennial was um, is imagination, the English. And um, this was, um, mm, this is a, so one part of that videos are from 2009, 2010, from Ankara, from the worker uh, strike demonstration that continued 78 days. And uh, we have the archive and we resembled, we assembled the... Um, Televizyon arkasından televizyonla sektörü. 
This was important um, to make a connection with our own experience in Gezi because it has a lot of similarities and uh, and we wanted to also in the archive show that there is a, there is a past experience and demonstration and uh, occupation before Gezi Park and uh, there is a kind of um, um, archive of um, um, practice and uh, so um, most of them we downloaded, uploaded, um, we, we got the archive and we uploaded to Bakma. You can find all of them there. And uh, this was, uh, this is also a work that we are, we are around eight people. We are working on uh, um, other videos um, that is, I mean, some of our members are in Rojava now. So we are trying to uh, create a new kind of um, uh, videograms from Rojava to Mardin and Ankara. And uh, this, uh, this of my practice brought um, an importance of uh, archiving, autonomous archiving. We just uh, um, did run a workshop conference uh, three weeks ago on this topic with Padma. We invited from India Padma. And uh, um, we discuss about um, how this kind of practice, what is the meaning in urban space, um, and uh, not only for political um, memory or archive, active archiving, but is also um, in urban context, uh, what does it mean? We have different kind of interests in the collective. Um, um, so it, all this different practice brings us. I'm not a real um, video person. But I was interested very much to, to search in the meaning of archiving practice and how autonomous archiving is possible. Um, I think I'm done. Um, we can discuss, because I'm, I'm uh, uh, expecting we will discuss more and I'm one hour, I'm okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I hope I was not so confusing, but I wanted to bring all my practice together, but I think it's very clear what I'm focusing on. Um, and uh, maybe it's very, speaking I'm from a very macro level. I mean, autonomy is a big word, is a very, um, 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 a kind of big scale, but um, I think, you can maybe um, bring your own practice and I mean, identify and um, think in your own local context and on your own territorial context. I think some question what we are discussing right now globally are same. Um, and um, how we can really um, sustain on autonomous infrastructure in the governmental level, in the administrative level, in case of Rojava, for example, where I'm, or for the other cities, and also in our, uh, totally in our own personal practice, um, in institutional framework. Um, it's a conflictual discussion, I think. It's a, there's a dilemma, a lot of dilemma. Um, we are depending on infrastructure, money, funding, space, this, that, people, labor. And uh, I think this, uh, this is some kind of, um, I mean, the moment where we're living now, when I'm traveling in Athens, in uh, Beirut, or in Tokyo, my, all my friends, they're having the same problems and uh, discussion right now. And um, I think this is worth to come together and discuss that, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so maybe I'll just put a very general question to both you, Palin, and respondents. Um, I mean, we're speaking a lot about failure, I think, here, and confusion. Um, so maybe we can start by notion of commoning, which you briefly mentioned, mm -hmm. so coming together, and what are some potential, what are some ingredients that are bound to lead to failure and success? 
And so both from Lili and your perspective at the city level and working with public space, uh, representing an institution on the municipal level, and Ethan, your various uh, projects. I, I could speak a lot about failure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm thinking about how luxurious it is to be in an environment like this. There are no walls to the public. Um, it's a black box. There's something uh, very symbolic in it for me. But being in a discussion where we can talk about intentionality, and for me, it's, it's the daily work is trying to figure out how to follow through with the intention because there's so, there's so much complexity, it's, um, it feels really, really difficult. And so the challenge is how to keep pushing with the intent, the mission, the ideas. I mean, that's the luxury, to be able to just talk about the ideas. Um, there's no time, or there's too much conflict right in front of my face to talk about ideas. We're talking instead about parking spaces. So, um, that's where I'm interested in how can, because I'm coming in here um, after day in and day out working in that realm and then saying, wh where's, I know there's an overlap because I can feel that there's an overlap, I know there is, but just where can I find the intersection of uh, that kind of boots on the ground, daily grind of it, and then the ideas and how do you keep that, keep the mission and try to follow through. I was Im I immediately asked her when I met her just uh, first time, just uh, an hour ago, what is the governmental policy, what is the strategy, design uh, rules, um, when uh, you, were, you were speaking about the projects that you were doing in the public space. So I, I was uh, the obstacle, uh, what is really uh, coming out and uh, how uh, uh, you're dealing with. Uh, this is the main thing generally um, um, uh, same in for example in silent university um, uh, in Hamburg silent university um, you, you're trying to set a public discussion and the refugees are lecturing and then in the audience there is two racists and they attacking to the uh, lecturer and uh, uh, this is somehow, this is very sad uh, to face this kind of conflict, but at the other hand, this kind of public project uh, engagement and brings this kind of um, um, antagonism that you have to, I mean, this is the reality and you have to face that. And this is actually part of the whole project, uh, the intention, let's say, that, that comes out. Uh, right. Unexpected, um, unexpected, but at the same time is 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 based in the society and. Uh, um, I mean, I find myself often in discussions where there are people talking about public art, and it's not we're not in a public venue, we're not in a public meeting. It's something like the Boston App Lab, and we're talking about public art, and or I'm. I'm going to another meeting where people are planning a public art project, let's say it's the MBTA. And the ideal held up, and I, I never actually get to say this in those meetings, so I say it privately, and I say this is not what I actually... Huh, okay. Oh. <laughs> um, but the notion is that the public process is a good thing, that engagement, getting investment, getting buy-in with the public is a really good thing. And I always want to be kind of the annoying um, downer because my life is so filled with how, and I want to say that it's not such a good thing, but that it's much more complex than just saying it's a good thing because it doesn't always get you the best result. It's not democracy out there that I see happening. It's not representation. It's not people having the voice. Um, when we're looking at the city, when we're looking at Kendall Square, where we are right now, and we're looking at something that's right down the street, and there's a, 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 there's a wall there. And that group, the Newtown Court, where there are kids that are growing from birth with a huge number of challenges, are very aware of Kendall Square. But there's a sense that Kendall Square is not aware of them. 
but they'll walk through it. They'll walk down to Toscanini's and to Central Square, and they'll walk right past them. And when I meet with them and I see the work that they're doing and I think about these conversations that are really about ideas and then I think about what they're trying to do and how little voice and um, they've been doing murals around Kendall Square and Alexandria Corporation is engaging them in places where there's construction going on, where there's MIT, Novartis, um, you know, the, the places that are creating all the development in Kendall Square. And the, those kids, are afraid to walk through Kendall Square. And I feel like that's, that's sort of an anecdote that for me brings up all these ideas. It brings up the conflict, it brings up the problem with democracy, it brings up the problem with saying public process is a really good thing, engagement with the public, we need to do all those public meetings. And then I, I see how the city does three years, 65 public meetings, barbecues, car washes, bike tune-ups, um, street parties, just to get people involved, to get the people who don't go to pu public meetings, try to get, you know, have, open up the, whole, the doors as wide as possible. And after all that, then we have a huge problem with the public art project. And I, and I, and I don't, I don't know, then it's the dilemma. It's like, the, that's where I hit this wall of failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can, can you say more about what the problem with the public art project that What's the specific failure? Was it a specific? Well, sometimes failure? it's like, I don't know. What is your problem? What is your problem? I, I, sometimes I can't even articulate it. We had one where the artists did exactly what they were supposed to do, and you know, we guide them through that process. Went through the public process. Neighborhood was totally behind it. And then they do a turnaround. They just do a complete 180. It might be a new person, walks, a new person moves into the neighborhood. It's a very small neighborhood. It's just a street reconstruction. They're all on email, and they decide, no, we want the construction to stop until we figure out the public art project. And we can't stop the construction. So the public art project has to be withdrawn. And then I spend the next seven years trying to find another site for that artist, which I just did on the Waverly, but at MIT. And <laughs> we say, we're gonna find a site for that artwork where there's no neighborhood, except for MIT labs, institutions, you know, people who don't, are not gonna object if you, I don't know. I don't know why I'm looking at you particularly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Maybe I'm going to object. <laughs> you, you, you've become an institution, <laughs> you're, you're, you're now the framework we react against. You are MIT. Um, uh, in another case, um, Matthew Mazzotta, whom some of you know, we're still working on him to find another site. Similar thing, three years public um, meetings, three years of public process, and he has the proposal, he's out there, public meetings, et cetera, going into the neighborhood. And then, um, so I, I feel like the public was engaged and had the chance to be engaged. And it's a so-called democratic. It, it isn't actually, in fact. And we had to withdraw his project mm -hmm. after that, and something else got put <clears throat> in its place. But people wouldn't know that. You know, the public walks by, oh, there's public art. That must be the piece that was for this project. And there were specific issues, like to answer your question, there were some specific issues that some of the neighbors brought up. It doesn't relate to us, it's not our lives. Um, we don't feel like we were part of the process. So the, the, the idea of um, that the collective knowledge, the community, the intentional, like the Occupy movement, there's everybody there wants to be there. There's a sense that there's a kind of collective mission but when you have, when you open it to the, to the public and everybody's coming with their different mission and their own collective, and maybe it's not so collective, it's just your personal mission. But you can probably get 300 people to sign a petition for your particular interest. And once you sign that petition, then if somebody else catches wind, another person will get their petition, a counter petition, and get 300 signatures. And that's what recently happened. And it was about 11 parking spaces that the city wanted to take away. And so that brings in the city manager, it brings in us, it brings in community development, it brings in traffic and parking, it brings in public works, and there's a tremendous amount of time and effort involved in that, and they get seven parking spaces back. So that it's, 
but that's a problem. <laughs> I see that as a problem, and 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 I, I don't. And part of it is sort of the educational thing, you know, the like what is education? And I see that education is on, is happening every minute. So that's just an example. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so I, I want to see maybe if I can push in a, in a slightly different direction, yeah, maybe because my, my work is not as, as rooted in the local environment. But uh, Angel, I thought it was very interesting that you, you asked a question around the commons, uh, and particularly around this question of, of failure. I think it's interesting that um, the commons for most of us gets invoked uh, usually in, in the context of the tragedy of the commons as, as mm -hmm. an aspirational space that we uh, quickly discover uh, doesn't work well within our aspirations, uh, that in many ways sort of frustrates our best intentions. Um, and what I found so, so interesting, Professor Tan, in all of your presentation was this, this sort of notion of aiming high, aiming very broadly, falling short, and then that sort of decision to, to keep moving forward. And this is such an interesting moment right now of imperfect and incomplete revolutions. Um, this moment of incredible hope in Tunisia and then in Egypt, and then the ways in which those hopes have fallen short, mm -hmm. um, certainly in, in Egypt's revolution, which has been in some ways you know, retrograde, um, the ways in which the revolutions in Libya and Syria have, have turned into bloodbaths in Yemen, um, and the ways in which the other revolutions that they've inspired have fallen apart in ways that are, are really sort of beautiful and, and, and tragic. Um, so I was really struck by you talking about the protests in Gezi as, as examples of the sublime. And, and they were clearly, for many people involved, very sublime moments, um, really around this idea, and now I'm going to butcher some Turkish and I apologize, um, mm -hmm. send a gel, you know, everyone come. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it doesn't matter who you are or what your background is, come. And for, for many people, some of these iconic images of a dervish dressed mm -hmm. in pink representing mm -hmm. uh, Istanbul's LGBT mm -hmm. movement at the same time as you have a movement with some ultranationalists involved with it, with Kurdish leaders involved with it, with people who under no other circumstances would find themselves looking for those sort of transversal methods, looking for a way to work together united by this opportunity of this space and time, and united, frankly, in, in this sort of way by, by, by a common enemy with Erdogan, and the, the sort of political frustration. Yeah, there is, a, I think, two things. Um, one, of course, there is a heterogeneous structure. It was in, in Gezi. And uh, I witnessed, I saw some other um, Occupy um, experience that was uh, more um, cultural class, homogeneous, and so on. Um, this, uh, there is the, the, the one side, the positive side, is that, um, yes, you can stand with people that normally you never meet in public space uh, or in any kind of institution and so on. And um, you, you're standing together and uh, you're trying to figure out a common language and practice. And actually, it's on, it's on the way you're producing. It's not like really you are trying to find it. It comes very organically and you continue. The negative side is that um, there is, it needs a rad imagination, huh? radical imagination. It's not only the space that you occupy. It's also about you, in, you imagine uh, um, the future, you imagine a society, you imagine a democracy. This is why you are there. And actually, each community has their own imagination. So the problem is, um, what is the total radical imagination, firstly? And I think this is the, one of the failure that, fa that makes yeah. it fail, you know? And, uh, and I don't see failure as a total negative thing. I mean, it's just a kind of this experience and could be a potential to, to go further, you know? I mean, like in this uh, film, there is a failure of corruption. I mean, there is no ultimate sublime uh, republic, in radical democracy, imagination. I mean, there's, there's always corruption comes back and it, everything fails. And then uh, humans turn into animal. And uh, these animals in the films are trying to remember what had happened, uh, why, they fa why human failed. And uh, 
I think um, this also was questioning um, the radical imagination. What is, who has this, which kind of radical imagination to act? Because for action, for act, you need that. And like in Gibson Graham, you need a collective one. But collective is, is it that collective that people, that communities, they think and act in the same way? Or, I mean, you're a group with a good group right. of people, you do video and this, uh, we are, we are having the same ideology, we are thinking in the same way. That makes collective collectiveness, sure. uh, yeah, basically. But um, this is one thing, and that was the second thing I wanted to say, uh, I forgot, oh, the enemy. So there was a lot of criti critics from, especially from Greek, uh, my Greek uh, friend, Greek anarchist and some other Italian anarchist, um, saying that this um, positioning was against Erdogan. I mean, let's say it's, it's against enemy, you know, the, the simple kind of um, um, acting against and creating the whole occupy, hold the position against an enemy. Is this, is this a kind of real emancipative um, practice? Uh, no. I mean, this is a simple uh, enemy friendship uh, uh, politics, you know, yeah. that we know from Carl Schmitt and this and that, um, philosophical and political theory. And uh, is, this, is this political act uh, really um, um, beyond the enemy? It should be. It, sh it should have been. Um, and uh, who is really sharing that, which is part of radical imagination? So this was one another big failure, again, of park uh, or people or the after post community. That is everything is against uh, structure. You 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 position yourself against the enemy. You know. So so but that that identity through alterity, right? That identity through essentially yeah, saying yeah. I am the other yeah, to this yeah, yeah. is in some ways the the it's the easier way to construct a movement. It's mm. the movement that essentially yes. says. We yeah. know what we have in common yeah. is that this system isn't working for yeah. us. Yeah. And, and we saw this in Occupy as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. right? And, and Occupy had a very, in, in some ways, different challenge. It wasn't necessarily the political challenge. It was more than anything in many communities a socioeconomic challenge where you had camps that were progressive, verging mm -hmm. to radical activists coming together in many cases uh, with uh, homeless populations, addicted populations, trying to figure out how to resist against a system that wasn't working for anyone, but whose needs in many cases were, were very, very different and, and trying to find a common agenda. And again, the anti-agenda in some ways is, is harder than the sort of affirmative agenda. One of the things that I was really struck by, both in your work, particularly with Silent University, and, and also in, in the Gezi camp, in Occupy camps is the ways in which existing institutions, even when we're consciously rejecting yeah, them, yeah. become the frameworks that we replicate. Mm -hmm. So exactly, yeah. um, in thinking about Occupy camps, in many ways what you ended up with was, was a template mm -hmm. that anyone could capture and sort of build elsewhere. You have to have a library, you have, you have to, to have, have a food a temp, hospital. you have to have a media yeah, tent, yeah. you have to have, and it, you can watch, you, you watch how it came together at Tarir, yeah. and you watch how it, it spread through Occupy, and you can sort of trace some of these back to, to, to earlier social and street movements. Mm -hmm. But there's this sense in which this sort of radical imagining of what would be a different way to organize ourselves, what would be a different way to yeah, be, yeah. is so challenging and so overwhelming that in some ways we're left with reaching for existing structures and subverting them. Mm -hmm. So Silent University is a wonderfully radical project, but in some ways it, it's, it's a literal replication of the structure of the university. Exactly. It's the ID card, yeah. it's the course, it's the instructor. It's taking this structure that we know and then saying what if we radically subvert it by putting someone who is you know, categorically disempowered sort of into that powerful position of the instructor within the relationship. And, and so one of those questions that I would sort of put forward is, what are our limits here? Do we necessarily need those structures? Do we necessarily need those architectures of institutions that we get to reclaim and rebuild in a radical form? Or is there something more deeply subversive 
if we can find a way to think beyond those existing structures. For me, the message of the film that you end up showing is, is sort of the danger of actually what we've seen in the revolution in Egypt, at least, which is when we have real revolution, but we don't have the revolution in the structures of the institutions, we leave a framework that ends up occupied by the next most powerful entity. So we lose Mubarak, and then we get the Muslim Brotherhood as the yeah. next most powerful yeah. entity. We lose the Brotherhood, and then we get the army as the next more powerful yeah, entity. Yeah. And, and how would we find ourselves with a true revolution where it's the institutions themselves that we find a way to move beyond? Yeah, this is, um, this is a main question in uh, Kobane, Rojava right now, <laughs> because um, uh, after the Kobene battle, um, it was really revolutionary. It understood, it, it, it is um, mm, experienced as a historical battle by Kurds and by, by people um, who are supporting it. And, uh, and uh, um, the post Kobene or Rojava <coughs> territory is kind of revolutionary, like commune life designing commune settlement, and so on. And when we speak, when we spoke with the um, urban planners and architects and uh, some people who are involved there, um, we, we, we see that, we know that um, there is a very high authoritarian organization also. So uh, th th this is a very, um, and in one hand, in a, um, for example, when they want to design, redesign the city, some settlement, um, the main problem remains property problem. Like people who, are, who want to go back, who are going back to con from Turkey, from Suruç to Kobene, they want their flat and house back. Mm. Um, they want their property back, something like that. But this is very conflicting with the idea of commun communal. Right. Yeah? Right. And, um, I just published online an, in, an interview, conversation with an architect who lives there in Kobane, and he's trying to proceed with his colleague um, part spotter design, um, designing commune settlement, and they have this all this right uh, uh, post. Uh, I mean, you, you do the revolution, and then what will and what will you do? Right. Yeah, how will, will you continue? Right. What, 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 you know? what will we build once And we've... this is the condition situation right now. And, uh, and uh, um, he's speaking about there are, of course, uh, local neighborhood assembles. The assembles are meeting and this and that. And they, he, he said that, I mean, it's also in the interview, um, he will, they will, uh, the group will design the settlement. They will propose the people and the people will choose it, how to live and how. And this is also, this they called part spot or design, and I said, no, there's no part for design. And uh, this is really, um, and uh, they were surprised to hear that. And uh, of course, there is an administrative part, which the administrative part is in war huh? against ISIS. I mean, uh, and uh, we were discussing just a few days ago with David Harvey, David was saying, the, um, they have uh, this very strong um, um, administrative part. I think, I, I was thinking, it needed because you are in war. You, you are in a very hot war. I mean, you are in a militarist and on the land, on the, on the, on the territory. And uh, so this is, I mean, this example, this Kobene example for me was very, like, you, you, you just witnessing this whole problem, right. you know, in, in a very urban building level to administrative level, and this also metaphorically, this whole ideas of after revolution, you know, when after the day, how, how will you sustain collectively? Is there any collective society? Yeah, I, 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 I'm interested in whether that's really a product of being at a moment of war. Yes, or this is whether it's a product of, in some ways, our, our perpetual collective failure of imagination to, to figure another way to, to, to govern or to structure. Um, this is, you, one hand, you're right. I mean, this um, governance, I mean, what you say about the governance structure, but we shouldn't undermine the power of ongoing long-term Kurdish movement. I mean, I, I, there's two things oh, together. Yeah. And I think 
they are aware of the society and they are also dealing with that. They are pretty aware and openly aware of that. And uh, most of the uh, cities right now where I'm living is run by Kurdish uh, mayors and um, the governors the governors are um, government state from different party from different ideology and they also uh, struggling with them um, in a term of autonomy and also they are part of their their institution they are part of a bigger institution and then beside that they're running a kind of freedom movement so it's a kind of um, this kind of situation extended um, mm -hmm. It's difficult to explain with one reason or one conclusion, um, I would say, in this specific um, Kobane and Kurdish movement. Um, although I'm not a professional, but, but this is what um, more involved and what I'm seeing, observing right now. And um, come back, maybe the question of commoning um, commons that we discuss in nearly every institution are organizing commons conference right now. Uh, even even municipalities, you know, like totally uh, neoliberal uh, structures too, and um, I think it's very it very speeded up with the post occupy conditions um, and um, and a lot of theoretical theoretical discussion that comes from um, tragedy of commons to negri um, 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 arguments and. Um, or how David Harvey describes as, as common as social relations and collectiveness. Uh, it's, we can describe continuously. Uh, it's not a physical structure. It's not a, a natural commons anymore. It is how we are um, organically, or way of life. It comes together, how we are um, um, aligned together, how the alliance been um, um, created. Um, yes, the, 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 the description is very nice. I have also in my text describing theoretically, but um, in different condition of urban or territory, it differs. The needs are differing and uh, the urgencies is, uh, it differs, um, differs. And uh, I mean, in silent university, we, we, we try to um, describe silent university education as commons. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not depending on real institutional structure, knowledge production. You can, you can create outside of them government, um, governmental institution, government itself, the state, and uh, educational institution. This is what we are always dealing with silent university. I mean, a refugee has no, um, or has a paper, um, or paper, paperless, I don't know how to call in English, um, Kiatsis, paperless migrant who doesn't have anything but yeah. um, waiting for um, asylum and so undocumented. on. Undocum undocumented. And uh, they don't have, some of them, they don't have the right per, 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 um, permanent um, uh, residency. residency. And um, this is very border politics and governmental policy thing, like some of our lecturers are like in this um, situation and some of them has a mask when they're teaching. They don't mm. want to be, they don't want to be seen or when, when, they, when we want photos or some kind of um, recording, they, they hide themselves. Um, but um, this is one thing. Second thing is, of course, um, how we structure, how different kind of institutions are hosting silent university. What is their rule? What is their policy? and how is sometimes conflicting with the condition of uh, silent university. And, uh, and uh, this is a kind of negotiating with instituting, practice of instituting and institutions in, in this conflict in between. And, uh, um, uh, and then after comes the topics, people, what, what they're discussing, what they want to say, how can you bring another kind of knowledge as a kind of totally non-institutional knowledge into kind of a different uh, perspective. Uh, I think this three thing, um, notion of citizenship, the borders, and secondly, uh, instituting practice, institutional conflict, and then the people who bring their narrative into it. This is the most artistic part, of course, uh, the more imaginative part, how this all comes together and uh, how it works in different kind of 
uh, West Europe, Athens, Jordan, Amman, where everybody is refugee, you know. So this is a kind of um, a leveled kind of practice of commons, or this describing um, commons um, in different level, in different conflict, um, I would say. Great, thank you. Um, perhaps we can, at this time, we can open it up to the floor. Um. Thank you. I think I, I think I understood about the silent university. I'm not entirely sure, so this may be totally out of line. But I'm struck by the three words after methodology, which are process words, labor, love, and fear. What's missing is an outcome. And I think that the fourth word needs to be after labor, love, and fear, outcomes. So outcomes. in terms of these courses, so to speak, within the silent university, what I didn't hear anything about was, what do I do about this? The course is over, what am I now empowered to do, what do I now have the, the wherewithal to do, and what do I do? And who do I do it with? I mean, thinking about the application, mm -hmm. of, rather than it being, or in addition to it being, uh, you know, yet another seminar, Mm -hmm. uh, or a rep repetition in slightly different form of the standard university. Mm -hmm. The conditions here, as you're describing them, are really quite different. Mm -hmm. And so the focus, I do believe, really needs to be very heavily on, on outcomes, however that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be simple, mm -hmm. but at least put that on the table and mm -hmm. sort of figure that out and have everybody figure it out so that, again, when the course is over and they have to do something on Monday, they'll know where to begin and what to do. Mm -hmm. um, are you asking this? Um, may, may I reply? Or? Uh, um, are you asking this question as a refugee? I'm not a refugee. Am I asking uh, me as a refugee? Yeah. No. Okay. I'm asking and um, outcome, how do you uh, define um, concrete application or sustainable really, yeah. forms? The degree of concreteness in a way is immaterial. What is material is some kind of application so that it gets out of the abstract mm -hmm. and into the very, very specific. Where do I go the next day? With whom do I go? And what are we going to do when we get there? Mm -hmm. It's that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not fancy and it's not um, whatever it's not. <laughs> but what it is is I now have the wherewithal to do something I didn't have before. Mm -hmm. There is, um, I think, um, um, for outcomes is a kind of difficult to define because outcomes, what you say, I mean, I'm thinking of that. Um, um, has sometimes concrete Im impact. Um, um, like um, one, one guy who was trying to get seven, since seven years a permit of residence in London, he just showed the card to his lawyer and he got permit of residence in England. Um, this is a concrete outcome with a fictional, total fictional, unreal university and practice. We don't aim that as an initiator or other people who initiate that, you know. You can, uh, outcomes can, can be unexpected. We don't know because many people are involved collectively and um, it depends on how people are um, continue with that. And um, let me explain, let me explain. Um, it differs in different cities in different branch. Some of them are very permanently continue with courses, meeting, and um, producing, kind of gathering together and teaching. Um, like in Hamburg is more permanent um, teaching and discussion going on. Um, for example, in, uh, uh, I think in Tensta Kunsthal is through uh, hosting Silent University, and they are in the same, um, in, other places, for example, is only workshop based. It, it cannot continue because of there is no proper space, there is no, uh, not so much funding, and it fails and then comes back again and continues again. It's, it's mostly with the um, effort of the refugees and people who are involved themselves. 
Um, so um, this, uh, your questioning, is very conditional. Uh, it, it, it fails in Amman and Jordan with some other reason, and it, in the other city, it continues with different branch. Um, people who want to initiate, initiate silent university, and uh, they are in charge of that. Um, pe people like us who are helping them, we are giving the all autonomy of the project to them. Uh, we are not ordering anymore. So um, this is another um, part that outcome can be not followed or fail or any, any uh, in your understanding of outcome will never come. Uh, I think this is, uh, we cannot say anything about that as me or Ahmed and so on. This is about the process, how we'll continue. This is all about um, also the institution either NGO who is hosting it. Um, sometimes NGOs wants to host silent university because they want a different kind of model, a form of space and gathering. And uh, some of them are art institutions and uh, some of them are uh, kind of project people who has a project space and kind of uh, interest and they, they're hosting. I think in Mülheim in Germany is like that and is very active. It's also, um, very much how people are taking part in that. And um, the courses um, happen sometimes a uh, few times in the same topic, once, maybe as a lecture only, once. And um, sometimes there are uh, uh, teaching in different cities, but people come, I mean, from London, the, the, the refugees who are involved, they go to Stockholm and they meet there with these um, people participant and they organize together a lecturing. And basically, in, it's more like bringing narratives and sharing it. And um, um, I see the outcome like that. Um, uh, not, there's no question about how to go Monday morning and continue. I mean, I don't think this question will work in this kind of project. Thank you. Uh, get me? Uh, yeah. I, mm. When I was hearing you talk about failures in commons, it made me wonder if perhaps according to certain uh, value systems, these failures should be um, celebrated or could be viewed as critical because they mean a certain persistence of a productive differences or productive heterogeneity. And, and that's one of the things that I really appreciated about the, the lack of like a fixed outcome or a fixed collective or a fixed commons because to me it indicates that, that the differences between people, the differences between their radical imaginations persist and perhaps even though that's related to a lot of unrest and um, conflict that that is, a, that is a, not a success but it could be viewed as, as a positive thing. But it's complicated so I didn't know. Yes, but I, what is your name? Run, in one hand, um, we are very considering what Run is asking. How to, um, how, for example, one of the silent branch, university branch can sustain, can bring um, concrete outcomes. So, sometimes we are puzzled with that. Also people who are running it and um, um, just think that two refugees is running and three refugees is involved, and then they have to leave the country immediately. I mean, everything is very precarious. And uh, people work there, but they don't earn money. But you put your labor, you know? And how can you continue? How many moms, you know? Um, these are very, I mean, concrete realities that the outcome that Ron is defining sometimes doesn't come. Of course, we can understand as a romantic also idea that oh, no outcome, the process is important, people are um, experiencing, we are experiencing, this experience is important. But um, different kind of common narratives are being produced. You know, this, this is also part of this whole artistic action, actually. But then, at the other hand, um, people are uh, trying to survive. Um, um, it's a new, it, it, it has a 
formation, new formation of citizenship. It has a potential, it has a big power at the same time, but a lot of weakness um, also involved. So it's a kind of dubious thing that what Ron is also asking, I mean, asking, and what you are pointing out. I mean, it, it goes both together, uh, the needs and that uh, dilemma and problem and so on. Um, but as it, 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 as it is a big collective project, many people are involved, we don't know most of them, it's also difficult to follow uh, in detail, yeah, the process. More questions? No question. Um, I, I was actually in, in Turkey um, that summer that the Gezi Park uh, what community was happening. It was really great, so it's great to hear you talk about it. But I, I guess, in a way, my question doesn't seem so different from the ones that have been asked, and it's kind of something that gets back to this thing about failure and trying to think about process and trying to think about, like, maybe, maybe more than outcomes, like, direction is something that is useful to me to think about, but, like, I wonder if you think that, um, you know, this, because I remember you kept talking about institutions and the sort of, like, there's this collaboration and also kind of antagonism between what your project is and, and the institution. And um, I wonder, you know, and then also in the film, this failed republic. Um, it just makes me think about in contemporary life, you know, is do we imagine that, you know, at some point there's gonna be more sustainability to the things that you are doing now, that they're kind of almost like experiments and that thinking about describing them as process is part of like imagining that at some point whatever that is that's failing is gonna become this other thing that you can't really see yet? Or do you see it as like, no, actually it just has to be something that's constantly changing because the minute it becomes a thing, like an institution, it's destined to fail? No, I don't, um, um, I'm sorry if I give the kind of impression that, um, uh, everything is always failing and the failing is good. I mean, I'm not saying that. This is the second, what you were saying is the challenge and the change is part of that. Yeah. But secondly, there is this specific condition of territories yeah. that continuously changing and uh, uh, you have to uh, continuously transforming or, and uh, you are part of that, you're observing, you're part of that and um, that affects your practice. Something that if uh, a macro level, there are effects. Um, so um, um, that is, um, can change in different condition. Um, I'm not, it's not a determinist, um, um, I'm not in a determinist um, uh, paradigm of thinking failure, uh, everything fails always after this kind of uh, imaginative project or it will fail. I'm not, um, I, I don't want to give this kind of uh, line. I'm just saying that this can be potential and, uh, and what is failure? Failure is uh, your project stops. Failure is you become unsuccessful on what you aimed, what you were in, intended before and your intention goes with Silent University, with that, with this. And uh, failure, somebody censor, censor your project. Mm, uh, you get arrested, uh, you are in the criminal court. I mean, um, this is maybe failure. That, that doesn't make you, prevent you to move. You are afraid, you have a fear, you know, you cannot um, continue. Um, this kind of, I mean, there are many, many reasons. Uh, what, what, what is failure? We, the, in, in other levels, we are speaking about the failure of revolutions. I mean, this is another topic and, uh, and um, it's another thing. But 
changes this part, I mean, you described in your second, so last sentence, is basically um, we have to face the change and, um, and failures are not only um, endless or um, ultimate. I mean, it, it, will, it will stand up and go, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, for now only my job is, uh, will not fail, this is what I know. But uh, the territorial problems is, I mean, at least in, in what I'm dealing with this whole, uh, this part of the world is very effective. I mean, it, this is uh, why failure is very easy. Uh, this is why. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to get back to this question of failure from the perspective of labor. You, you talk, um, you mentioned labor and you also uh, mentioned love. And one of the things that comes to mind um, is effective labor, which mm -hmm. is yeah. um, what autonomous feminists refused to give uh, in the 70s and that partly not entirely caused the failure of the autonomous movement in yes. Italy and in France. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering where effective labor comes into these new practices because it seems to me that part of what you're doing is effective labor, the idea of developing methodologies, the, uh, the idea of attending to the possibility of imagining something new, of composing these assemblages. Um, so where does the discourse or the practice of effective labor come into your projects and have you incorporated this in the active discussions? Because there is no generativity, there is nothing after um, failure unless um, things become scalable and unless there are people, not just in the kitchen, but you know, doing the dirty, boring, tedious work in the background, rather than just the, you know, coming up with grand ideas. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. would love to hear more about that. Yeah, this was a lot of discussion in my collective. Also um, in uh, Gezi Park 2, um, I think effective labor is really based on collectiveness. And how you pass your labor to someone. I mean, collectiveness, that means not to create this effective label together, but you pass someone who take it and who pass the other one. And some kind of a transfer of, this is action labor, I think. Um, this is not um, 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 voluntary labor. This, 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 there, is a, there must be difference of this kind of... Um, uh, because voluntary labor brings also a lot of labor exploitation too, and uh, and you cannot really realize yourself together coexist with the others. Um, and um, in some of my video collective practice or with um, other work we are doing, um, this is the basic the question and criticize yourself a lot. And I understand this. Um, um, there was a discussion, I think in New York too, I mean, in Occupy, who washed the dishes, you know, like two, two people, always the same people wash the dishes, but we occupying collectively together, but what, how to organize, manage the daily life, and that needs labor, and, uh, and uh, who will cook, who will carry this there, and this and that, you know, everything is like, um, um, it sounds like physical labor, and uh, and uh, you, you working hard, and uh, you are in the middle of a revolution, <laughs> but uh, your your labor is exploded. <laughs> so this is a um, this is important um, um, uh, to really I feel more the 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 I call it the labor of the day after. Um, uh, you always eating the other labor's labor of your labor. You know, this is. Um, I feel like that. I'm just uh, feeling in my activities that, and um, of course, um, I'm not speaking about precarious uh, labor. This is a kind of different. Uh, I mean, in my case, I'm not. Uh, I never had. I, I had always a job, uh, a salary, and uh, academic position. I'm not precarious and. Uh, um, I'm not an activist. Um, I'm, I'm doing uh, what normally um, I feel what an institutional person should do. I mean, actually, and um, this is why um, I try to 
bring this all practice together, which is a shift of labor, uh, but connected uh, with people and with other things I do, um, which is including my academic uh, uh, work too, I, my administrative work too. You know, this is my personal um, answer. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question here. Um, this question is, I guess, for all three of you, and um, most directly uh, addressing something that Lillian said um, that struck me um, specifically about, yeah, I've also been looking at uh, the history of uh, the port and Kendall Square and the kind of tensions that have existed for a numerous amount of time. Um, and I was just thinking in terms of the questions that we've been talking about, um, in terms of organizing and the, um, uh, I mean, personally, I've been very inspired by um, the Kurdish movement and the Rojava revolution and um, <clears throat> the idea of democratic confederalism. Um, but in terms of what exists kind of now in a contemporary state, both locally uh, in uh, the United States um, and in other Western countries, um, is the complete alienation among um, communities uh, and, and people um, being able and affording themselves the, um, the importance of working, not just working with other people, but really just um, creating opportunities to exist and, and um, to organize and plan with all sorts of people, which I think was, a large fail was one of the large failures of Occupy was um, the fact that it was everybody coming together in this big crisis um, and not knowing what to do. It's like you had people who've been organizing for you know, years and years and who've been you know, activists on the scene and they know how to like, use the people's mic and they know how to use you know, all these kind of tactics. Um, but uh, for newcomers, so to speak, um, a lot of the difficulty was, okay, how do you organize in a place all at once you know, at the same time while trying to navigate, you know, everyone's different agendas. And it's like, um, I, maybe the question is, um, how do you see the state of organizing um, and uh, some of the, um, s yeah, well maybe this is just a way too broad question, but I, I don't wanna use the, keep using the term like successes and failures, but just noting my observation of the lack of opportunities that is that I want to say that most people allow themselves to exist in terms of not even political organizing, but organizing uh, locally with uh, people that are not their immediate community. Does that make sense? I think there are always those who have either the skills or the background to be able to organize or the experience and then those who are not so good at it. And you don't necessarily need experience to just have some kind of natural ability to organize people. But one factor that I think that's relevant is that sense of do I have permission to organize? Do I have permission to organize myself insert myself into that realm, or, and do I have permission to organize, and do I have that power? And some people assume that position, and some people feel like they don't have that permission from the get-go. And so that's, that's an underlying you know, problem that's a social justice equity problem. I think it's an incredible problem of aspirational movements in that movement building is inherently about compromise. And that when you have an aspirational movement and people are trying to sort of achieve their highest goals, it's a moment at which people are often very, very bad at making those compromises and trying to figure out where the common ground comes into play. Um, and so in some ways, while movements you know, look like the space in which we have the best chance to, to reach these higher aspirations, in a funny way, they're, they're often some of the hardest ways to, to get there because it's the moment at, at which we're least willing to compromise our own aspirations on this while simultaneously realizing that if we're actually going to get the strength of a broad-based movement, 
we would need the solidarity and common ground of not just our point of view, but of a much broader range of points of view. Yeah. I, I think I repeated before. <laughs> um, we have one more question in the back yeah. there, Jessica. Mm, since the time is running out, I will. I wanted to read this and then ask a question. I think I could leave it for for later. This came up uh, from I think the first video I, I saw in one of the courses, which was called "This Is Not a Dress Rehearsal," where which features Judith Butler, um, Judith but Butler doing a lecture that was filmed over and over again by two artists. And in a way, like you see this like strenuous, laborious more uh, sequence of why you're always asking why is this lecture being shot as if it's trying to become so something else but is in this state of becoming so the last sentence was which i always remember um, the challenge is to discern how critique uh, and it's interesting now that we're not talking critique about critique in this case so the challenge is to discern how critique can function as a de-idealization one that features and preserves the love that incites or generates it. So this reminded me of your lecture. Thanks. Well, uh, maybe on that note, uh, I would like to uh, thank you all for being uh, here with us this evening. Uh, it's really wonderful to see, to see uh, the faces and the people who are uh, coming back to this space and uh, joining our uh, discussions. Uh, and with those discussions, we're trying to push forward the criticality and, uh, and the field in which we are working. And, uh, and also, actually, you know, uh, uh, the other thought that came to my mind uh, was the, wor uh, the words of Dushan, and I think this was also reiterated by uh, Sarat Maharaj, when said how to make uh, the work of art that is not a work of art. Uh, so I think uh, this is very much in the in the ethos of the transversal thinking. But mm -hmm. thank you, thank you for for giving us this lecture uh, about uh, that type of thinking. Um, and also many thanks to our respondents, Ethan Zuckerman and Lilian Su, um, uh, our moderators, An Angel Chen and Ursula August. Uh, um, also um, our supporters, Susan Cohen and the Council of Arts at MIT, uh, and all the students and staff uh, at the ACT community who made this series possible. Uh, we look forward to your participation in our series this coming spring, 2016. Um, and uh, for a full calendar of our lectures, projects, and events, please see our information table, sign up for our mailing list, and visit our website, <laughs> act.mit.edu. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.